we were in one of those knickknack stores, and I was half looking for an idea for this year's ornament project, and I ran across some candle stands that were moderately interesting, <laughs> but they gave me an idea. Maybe I could do a candle stand. And I've wanted to do a segmented turning where the segments have a slight angle cut to them, as in the blade is tipped to an angle. So my idea is to do a simple candle stand and cut the segments at an angle so that I get a spiral pattern. So the first thing I needed to do was to add a zero clearance throat plate to my wedgie sled. I'd cut angles on this before, and in doing that, it had widened up the slot where the blade goes. And I found small pieces get stuck in that slot. So my solution is to cut out a small pocket around that slot for the blade and fill that with a throat plate. I took the sled apart so I could get just the base to put onto the CNC machine. This will be the one thing that I do on the CNC for this project. <laughs> and I can take the piece off. That was fairly straightforward. It was just cutting a rectangle. Then I can make the throat plate, and I made several of these at the same time, so I will have some extras for different blade angles. I figured out where to put the screws that I would use to hold the throat plate in place. I didn't want them where the blade would hit them, and I drilled a bunch of them at the same time, so the holes will be in the same place. And then I can just add the screws and I can put the sled back together again. I've held all the parts together with screws, so my hope is everything will go back in the same place and it will lie nice and parallel to the blade and still work as it did before. And everything went back together just fine. I can do the first cut through the throat plate and I just angled the blade to what it looked like I had done before. And I did make it a round number for the angle, but I can't remember exactly what that was, whether it was 8 degrees or 10 degrees. For the wood I thought I would use for this project, I had cut up a maple tree in the front yard of my father-in-law's back in 2017. And in cutting that up, I had some smaller pieces that were sort of strips. <laughs> and I thought they would be good for making segments. I can use them for this project. And it's a nice light colored maple, so I can contrast that with some purple heart for the stripes. I cleaned those pieces up on the joiner and the table saw. One of the pieces had a crack down the middle and a little bit of a cup, so I cut that on the bandsaw where the crack was. Then that made that piece smaller and I could then join it in plain that piece. Once I had the strips I was going to use to the right width, I could resaw them to the right thickness, or I guess closer to the right thickness. <laughs> Once I ran it through the bandsaw, I could then get them to a precise thickness with the planer. I was shooting for just a little more than half an inch. The hose clamps I used to clamp the rings are half an inch wide. If I make the segments a little bit more than half an inch, they should work with those clamps. Then it was just a lot of segment cutting. And what I found was that with the way the sled works, and once you angle the blade, you end up with pairs of segments. So you have segments that point the cut in one direction and segments that point the cut in the other direction. So you really have to make two of what you're working on if you want all of the angles to point in the same direction. If you wanted to make a wavy pattern, then you could use both sets of rings. I wanted to add a strip in between half of the segments. So I have a piece of purple heart, and I plane that to the same thickness. I can cut a thin piece off of the same fence over and over again. So I get a little wafer piece that has parallel sides. 
I can use the purple heart piece between the maple segments. And it should give me a purple stripe going up the candle holder. I couldn't use the pencil to hold the little cutoff piece as these were so thin. So I ended up with a little tab on the corner of each of these that I had to sand off. My idea for gluing these segments together was to use a hose clamp around the outside of each ring and sandwich that between two pieces of plywood. As the seams between the segments are at an angle, if I just put a bunch of force around the outside of the ring, all the segments are gonna slide apart. So I need some kind of force from below and above to hold the ring together as it gets squeezed from the perimeter. So the first ring I made, I put glue on each segment and put each segment in place on the piece of plywood. And this worked okay, but it was somewhat slow. I also found later that using thicker plywood was a much better option. <laughs> I started with quarter inch and it, it bends too much. It didn't seem like it was, but the rings weren't coming out as flat as I'd like. Once I did a couple of these, what I figured out is I could lay out all the segments, then put the glue on all at once in a strip, then paint the glue onto that surface made by all of the segments. And this was a little more efficient. Once the glue was in place, I could then just put all the segments and the little spacer pieces into the ring really quickly. I would put the clamp on just a little bit, then sandwich the piece just a little bit so it could still move just a little bit, then tighten up the clamp, then tighten up the sandwich. So it was sort of working towards the, the final forces on the piece. This is what one of the pieces looked like after coming out of the clamp. And I could sand the two sides on the disc sander I just put new paper on the disc sander, and it sands much, much better now. And that's how they'd come out. Nice and smooth, but mostly flat. So they will stack together with nice tight seams. And you can see the twisting pattern going on and all of the pieces stacked together. Then I can glue the rings together. I did this by gluing them in pairs to start. I didn't want to try gluing them all at once as I think they would slide around too much and there really wasn't a way to hold them in place. So I did the same thing with the sandwich and the plywood. This really just let me use one clamp in the middle instead of having a whole bunch of clamps all the way around each ring. And once I had the pairs glued up, I could start gluing those pairs together, building up the stack with one seam at a time. Then I had the whole stack together and I glued a piece of plywood on each end, and this will give me something to hold on to with the lathe. I can have a piece to drill a hole into for the tailstock, and I can hold on to the square with a chuck on the, the drive side of the lathe. I was feeling like at this point it was going together well, and the pattern was working out. So I had two of these at this point, one that turned in one direction and one that turned in the other direction. I put the piece on the drive side, then I squished the tail stock into the other end to get a mark on the piece. Then I drilled a little hole where that mark was, so the tail stock would hold the piece in place a little bit better. Then I could turn, and first I just made it round. I used my big spindle gouge for that. This removes material nicely. I made two sizes of rings as some of my strips weren't quite wide enough for the rings that I started with. Bigger sets of rings had segments that were two inches wide and the smaller rings, I made the segments an inch and a half wide. I didn't need the width where the neck of the stand is so I could make the rings a little smaller. So it worked out. 
Once I had it round and the shape roughed out, I could use my bowl gouge to work on the underside of the neck. I couldn't really do this with the bigger gouge. And I had originally thought everything would be straighter, but I ended up putting a lot of curve into this piece. That just kind of is the way it turned out. I think it just felt a little nicer. And I made the neck a little narrower. It was still feeling a little too thick. And I can use the scraper to get a nice surface on the piece. It'll pick out all the ridges and valleys left by the gouge and the bowl gouge. And this is the whole turning process really quickly. You can kind of see how the shape forms from the glue up. And I was beginning to think I had a little bit of a problem with the pattern. <laughs> I've run into a little bit of a problem that I, I should have known was going to happen in that it's a lot harder to align the rings as you glue them up and trying, trying to get nice clean strips that sort of twist around the piece really doesn't work that well. They're, they're kind of very misaligned. I think the, the quick fix on these is to just cut off the bottom section because the, the top actually doesn't look too bad. It's got a little bit of a pattern going. I think the, the better solution with these maybe would have been to have glued the rings with more of a random pattern as they move up the, the piece so that you don't get the strips, but at least you don't get the strips not quite aligned. <laughs> I could sand at this point. I'm only going to sand the upper section as I'm going to cut off the bottom, so I don't really need to make that perfect at this point. I started with the grinder on the big sections, and that really helps. Then I can use my drill sander to finish up. I use the parting tool to make a deep mark, or sort of a cut, where I'm going to cut the rest of the bottom off on the bandsaw. So at least that edge will be nice and straight and round and level, I guess. <laughs> and I'll have less to cut on the bandsaw if I make this deep. Then I could clean the plywood off the top. I cut another deep mark with the parting tool at the seam between the maple and the plywood. Then I can just carve off the plywood from the top. And I measured the wide candle that I want to put in this. And I marked where I need to cut for that. I'm going to make a little pocket for that candle to sit in. I can start to carve away some of that material while it's still on the tailstock and get the last bit of plywood. The center of this is, has a void in it, so I don't have to go all the way through to get the plywood off. Then I put my steady rest in place, which just fit around the head of the candle stand, and I got that all in place. Then I could turn the end without the tailstock in the way. I might have been able to get away without the steady, but it was a little bit of insurance, and it did seem to work fine with it. That let me clean up the top and get everything nice and square. I was wondering what to do about the center. Usually when I see something like this, I want to make a hole and then put a plug in that hole. But what I was thinking is I could make this for both a wide candle that sits in the pocket I've made, and I could drill out that center with a hole that's the size of the skinnier type of candle. So it can be a holder for a, for a stick candle, I guess you'd call them. It can be a two-function candle stand. <laughs> the bit I found that was about the right size was also really long which isn't the best because it wobbled a bunch, but it still cut the hole okay, so it worked. Then I can sand the top, which was really small, so it went really fast. Then it's mostly done. I can open up the steady. This piece is 
right about the limit of how big this steady will work with. Then I can cut the bottom off on the bandsaw using the slot that I cut with the parting tool. And this doesn't really have to be perfect. I just need to not hit the part of the project I don't want to cut. <laughs> then I can just sand the bottom flat. I just sand her. And I can put finish on. And I'm going to try shellac again. And I'm going to put wax on these as they're candle holders. That seemed like it made sense. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the best finish for this. I like the idea. And they turned out fairly nice. I think the, the pattern could have been a little better. If anyone has, knows or has any suggestions on how to line segmented rings up better than just doing it by eye, that would be nice to know. <laughs> well, here's to wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and to hopefully a most excellent 2024. Thanks for watching.